you guys okay welcome back we are doing a book review today okay so i mentioned this in a previous video that i really got back into reading this year and i said i'd read all the books i read so i read 10 books this year and i'm gonna rate them all out of 10 and like give you a quick blurb without spoiling anything so that you can get inspired to read next year i'd also like to preface this that i had a tonsillectomy me a couple of days ago I'm not feeling the best, but I said I wasn't going to miss an upload. So please be proud. Please be proud. Please press the like button. Instead of speaking about these in order of like which one's my favorite to which one's my least favorite, I'm going to talk about them in the order that I read them, like chronological order. So I think the first book I read this year was Ghosts. So Ghosts by Dolly Alderton. We love her. Well, I love her. Dolly Alderton wrote Everything I Know About Love, which is one of my favorite books. For some reason, it's really lighthearted, but it just is just... I didn't read that this year so I'm not gonna talk about it but I would recommend it so I was really excited to read this one I got this like in the pre-sale or whatever it's called and it didn't live up to my hype it didn't live up to my hype I think maybe it's because I loved the other ones so much that I was expecting this to be like a 2.0 but it wasn't so ghosts it's about ghosting so modern day dating and ghosting. So Dolly Addison is very sarcastic. Love that part. Like love that. But then obviously mixed with the ghosting, this character was quite pessimistic, quite negative. So I wasn't obsessed with the character, which I've said before in videos, makes me not obsessed with the book. Like I kind of want to fall in love with the character, even if they're a bit evil, I want to love them. But I didn't love her. I found her a little bit of a pessimist. Like it is a good story and I'm thinking back and I remember so much of it and I like some of it was great but most of it was a bit droll. Like it, it felt like there was a grey cloud over the book without sounding dramatic. I have this app called Goodreads, I'd recommend it. It shows like every book they've read, how they rank them, any book they want to read, this, that, the other. So I ranked this book three out of five when I entered it into the Goodreads app and it sounds about right. I re-ranked it today. I'm doing it at out of 10 and I'm giving it a 5.5 which overall isn't very good. However, I know a lot of people have enjoyed this book. If you enjoy sarcastic, like very realistic books, you'd probably rank this a bit higher, but I would give this 5.5 out of 10. Nonetheless, love Dolly Addison. Oh my God, I have not spoken this much in so long. It's painful. Okay, next one, Miss Benson's Beetle. I have no idea why I picked this book up. I have a feeling I just like the cover. Don't judge a book by its cover and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I picked it up. It's a random one, okay? It's pretty random. It's set in 1950s London. It's like an adventure book. So the main character is on a mission to find this beetle, which has never been found before. So it's really strange. And because it's set in the 50s, it's it's so different. It's so different to any book I'd read before. When I first started it, like the first couple of chapters, I was like, wait, this is so cheesy. I don't like this at all. But it grew on me so much. I gave it a 6.5 out of 10 because I actually recommend it. It's like a nice lighthearted one, probably more summer based. Like if you're going on holiday, this would be a good one to bring on your holiday. You'd probably finish it on your holiday. The main character is like OCD, old fashioned. And then there's like this side character who's like chaotic, kind of like a Barbie doll. And um, it's a really good story. Absolutely. I would recommend it. Yes, I would. I would recommend it. It's fun. Oh, I don't have the next book here, but I borrowed it off my friend Gabby and it is this one, American Dirt. My friend went on about this book so much that I was like, okay, you're killing it for me already. You know, if someone's like, oh, this is gonna be the best restaurant on ever. You're gonna love this movie, blah, blah, blah. And then you watch it and you're like, mm, you had my hopes up like way too much. This book lived up to the hype and actually more. It was more than I thought it would be. So without giving any spoilers away, it followed a mother and son who were trying to get away from the cartel and trying to break into America and oh my god okay so I was obsessed with this book obsessed I was couldn't get over how much I loved it like the story I was obsessed with the, ca the characters I was fighting for them like if I wasn't reading the book I was thinking about the characters which is always a good sign I think I cried at some point in this book like that wouldn't be saying much I cry very easily it was so emotive is that the word emotive sometimes if i finish a book or a movie or a tv show i'm obsessed with like i have to like look up other people's opinions and like let's talk about this kind of thing and the reviews were not good the reviews were not good people um were outraged that the writer was not mexican and she was writing about the experience of trying to get out of mexico but she had no experience with it and they said that it was a little bit stereotypical the book and some people were kind of offended by that so i was like oh my god i 
feel crap now that I really enjoyed this book. So I totally get where people are coming from with that. And like, I have no place to say really this, that, the other. But I can still say that the book was really good. Even if it's a bit stereotypical, like I learned so much about an experience that I had no clue about before at all. And I always find reading, reading any kind of media helps with empathy in any kind of situation. So um, I still think it's an amazing read. And I actually ranked it 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. I just love that book and would really recommend everyone to read it. Okay, next one, guys. Not good. I did not like this. I went to the bookstore and I my friend was picking out like the books out of the top 10 area. And I was like, no, I just want to be different. Like, I just don't want to be getting something that everyone else is getting. So I went to this like obscure part of the bookshop and was like, oh, this looks so different. Read the back and in the back it says, it shows the experiences of young women traveling the world. And I was like, oh, okay, it's a bit of me, love that. And the areas mentioned in these 11 stories are like Brooklyn, Donegal, Dublin, Mexico, Texas. I was like, oh, I've been to all of them. This is so for me. So I was trying so hard to be different and like, educated and cultural taking up this book it was crap it was crap the author is irish so i kind of hate saying that i didn't like this book but i just have to be honest i didn't like it it's quite a small book and it split into 11. that was probably the one good thing about this book is that it went really quick it kind of struck me as short stories from like leaving cert i know that's so mean i know that's so mean i don't know something juvenile about it i gave it two out of ten it's my least ranked book this year. So I feel bad, but it just is what it is. It just is what it is. It wasn't up to scratch. Maybe next time. Dear child. So I actually picked this up in a charity shop. Um, I had no real expectations. So it was two euro. Saw that it said thriller on the back. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. And it was good. It was good. Very different. Very chilling. Very dark. German writer. And the book is, it's a psychological thriller. It's about a woman who's held in captivity in the woods, in a cabin there's kids involved like it's quite dark and so it's like an unraveling of the story trying to figure out what happened um etc etc so this book for you if you read it would probably be better than was when it was for me because i love psychological thrillers like as movies love like my favorite genre and i always try and figure out the ending and i was like caught up on this one detail in the middle of the book and was like mm, i have a, i have it sorted i know what it is and i was like caught up in this one detail <laughs> I finished the book and then that little thing wasn't resolved and I went back and I had read it wrong. I had read it wrong. So it kind of annoyed me. Like I was caught up about this one thing in the book that wasn't even real. It wasn't even real. I just made it up. So that was annoying because then when I finished the book, I was like, wait, it's not resolved. What's going on? I see a loophole here. No, sweetie, you just read it wrong. So I ranked this six out of 10. However, I think the average person would probably rank it 7 out of 10 because it was actually really good really good plot all the little loose ends at the end were tied up 6 out of 10 maybe 6.5 but it was 6 out of 10 for me this book as you can see from all the watermarks was my holiday book it's another irish author i feel like irish authors irish people in general were quite i wouldn't say pessimistic we're just quite cutting there's no cheese there's no cheese with an irish person so there was no cheese in this it was sh it was sharp it was sharp is that the word sharp it was sharp it's witty it's sharp and um, the girl in it is a little bit negative so i wasn't obsessed with her she just wasn't my kind of person like i wouldn't be friends with her in real life so reading about her story just isn't for me do you know what i mean but she was funny and she was irish so she's abroad where is she again she's in hong kong so she's in hong kong but she's irish so it's nice how she ties in a lot of like irish childhood memories and stuff if that makes sense the mention of like centra and super value and stuff it's just kind of nice and like I'm saying this, but I did rank it a 3 out of 10. Maybe a bit harsh. It just doesn't set me alight. It's just not my buzz, okay? Okay, I feel bad putting people under 5 out of 10, but it's just not for me. My queen, my queen, my queen. And contrary to the other book earlier, Paris Syndrome, where I said that I stayed away from the 1 out of 10 section, in essence, do you know what I mean by the one out of 10 section? Like when you go in, it ranks books as, as in like the most selling, highest selling books. I always saw this book as like number three on the charts, like constantly. And I was like, mm, no, thanks. I'm good. I'm good. I'm different. No, you're not. No, you're not, sweetie. You're obsessed with this book. I read this book so quick. I had to finish it. Like I had to finish it. I just want to know the story. I became obsessed with the character. Like I still would think about it sometimes. 
a little obsessive? Maybe. But I ranked this 9 out of 10. Guys, I can't believe I'm doing a video with this. Are you so proud? The main woman in this has had seven husbands and she's like, old Hollywood, when's it set? Okay. Oh yeah, 1950s. So it's set in the like 1950s, but 1950s Hollywood. So it's like super glam. It's like, she really reminds me of what I think Marilyn Monroe would have been like. I don't know. Just something about it. I absolutely love it. I've recommended it to so many people. So many people have picked up this book and sent it to me and been like, Stephanie, I'm reading this book. I really enjoy it. Yes. Yes. It's so good. Do it. I presume we've heard of Reese Witherspoon's book club. If I just casually walked into a bookstore without wanting a certain book, I'd look up the Reese Witherspoon's book club recommendations and this one came up. So it's set in Ireland. So I was so excited to read it. It's set on like, I don't know if it really says in the book, like in... I'm kind of guessing like Aran Island's vibe, um, but it's a wedding set there. Someone dies and it's like figuring out Cluedo's situation. So it goes through the events of the night to the perspective of six different people, six different guests. It's cool. It's a good one. I really like it. What did I rank this as? Six out of ten. It, it, not to sound mean, but kind of just like your typical, your typical thriller, like bang, bang, did everything I needed to do, but didn't change my life. So that's probably why I have it at 6.5. It was quick paced as well, like really easy to read. Like it wasn't horrendously long chapters. Does anyone find if the chapters are really long? It's it's hard because when I'm going to bed at night, I want to read maybe two, three chapters, done. But if one chapter takes like half an hour, you know what I mean? I thought I read so much this year and then it's only 10 books, but I suppose 10 books is a lot, isn't it? Right? The Song of Achilles. So for some strange reason, I had no idea that this book was about Achilles, like ancient Greek Achilles. So I think I was like a third of the way through the book and I was like, wait a second. I wish I knew that in advance because I was a little bit, I was a little bit confused. I was a little bit confused. I was like, what is this history lesson I'm going through right now? So the first half of the book, right? When I tell you, I was enthralled, enthralled. It was super romantic, super descriptive. So it's the story of Achilles and Patroclus. Has anyone seen the Brad Pitt Troy movie? It's an old movie, like I saw it when I was younger, but I rewatched it after reading this book. So I was like, I need more, I need more. In the movie, Patroclus is Achilles' cousin or something like that. But in this book, they're lovers. So it's a very different take, but it's so interesting. So it starts in their childhood and goes all the way up to the end of the story, if you know the story. But going back to what I was saying, the first half, super romantic. It was their story. It's like their little love story. It's set in like such a magical little land as well, like their centaurs and blah, blah, blah. It just was really different to the second half of the book. Like they're completely different in my opinion. Um, and I just wasn't ready for the change. So kind of like I was confused. So the second half of the book is when they go to war against Troy and it's very, very historical detailed in like a non flowery descriptive way detailed in of like i felt like i was kind of reading the bible vibe um which wasn't what i was signing up for you know now it picked up again towards the end the the end was great as i said the first half i was obsessed with it was like nine out of ten vibe and then it went down to like four out of ten so overall i gave this a seven out of ten maybe seven to seven point five out of ten i have finished this like maybe over a month and i still sometimes like think about it which is a good sign and as I said, I had to watch the movie because I was like, I need more, I need more. And I started like sitting down and like researching ancient Greek gods and stuff. A little OTT, but you know, let me live. Okay, and last book I completed this year is Such a Fun Age. So I'd seen this one online. I more picked it up because it deals with race and I was like, okay, I always need to learn more. So let's just, let's just pick this up and learn. But it was very interesting. What did I write this as? I did 7.5. I did it over Achilles. Interesting. The main girl in it is black. She works as a like a babysitter for a white family and then ends up getting this white boyfriend. So it deals from the main girl's perspective and also deals from the mom of like of the kid that she babysits. It's a very good read. A very quick read. Like I flew through that and um, very entertaining, like very entertaining. It is so interesting, the different conversations about race and how some of the characters tiptoe about race and some of them are literally racist and some of them are trying so hard to not be racist that they end up being just like so OTT. And I learned a lot from it. Reading, watching movies, all those kind of media are so good for empathy and like kind of understanding other people's uh, point of view and stuff. So I found it really good to like take in all the different sides 
of the conversation if that makes sense but this isn't like a historical book where you like sit down and learn about this that the other it's actually like a really casual story and if you're tuning in you'll get all the hints at like privilege and racism and stuff like that so it was really good it's actually what's it here the 2020 booker prize yeah it was really good i would recommend that fully um i think any book that i recommended over five i'd recommend to someone to actually pick up i think the only ones i really wouldn't recommend are exciting times and paris syndrome um unfortunately ghosts i don't know if i'd fully recommend it either so any of the other seven really good would recommend but i have this little rule with myself that if i'm coming to an end of a book I'll get another book and then like if I finish this on Tuesday I'm starting my next book on a Wednesday night because if I take a break at all I could go like two years without reading so this new little routine I have is really good and I find it such a nice way to like wind down in the evening because my phone overstimulates my brain TikTok Instagram I'm just so it's just so toxic for me if I'm on my phone before I go to sleep and then I put on the phone my mind is still kind of running but if I'm on my phone then put it down and read for like 30 minutes. I feel so zen going to bed and my mind is much clearer. If that makes sense. Lovely loads. Thank you for being here. Get reading.